Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. Today is Wednesday, June 6, 2007, and the market's closed. We had another losing session on Wall Street today. The uh, S&P 500 closed at 151.10, losing about 1%. And uh, the sell-off got a little bit worse today after um, we saw that the support was broken yesterday. That support at 153.50 uh, did act as resistance late in the day. And we had a lower opening here this morning back below the five-day moving average, which is now turning lower. So yesterday I suggested that we be cautious in the uh, short term, be on our toes a little bit, because the intraday time frame on this 10-minute time frame had had. Uh, broken down and we had these other moving averages turning lower so that tells us that uh, we need to be a little bit cautious I was hoping that we would see some support near 152.50 unfortunately that level did not hold and the sell-off got a little bit more severe if we look at a little bit further time back that is the 30 minute time frame we can draw a trend line here off these May 14th lows and see that they were hitting in May, on May 24th and here we are again today testing that area. So we do still have on this time frame a pattern of higher highs and higher lows intact. So this area might give enough people reason to stop selling and another f other people reason to start buying. But I wouldn't be one of those people until the market can actually show us that the five-day moving average is flattened out like it had over here, and then the market gets back above that. So I still think that uh, short-term, that is the next couple days, that uh, neutral at best, maybe we'll see a little bit further selling because we do have these moving averages heading lower. But the longer-term time frame, the daily time frame, uh, we still see a very healthy uptrend intact here. It is the first close we've seen below that 20-day moving average since... Uh, well, since back here on uh, uh, March 20th. So for the first time since this really this rally really took hold, we had our first close below that 20-day moving average. So that is somewhat important to note. It doesn't mean we're necessarily going to go down and test the 50-day moving average. But these things do have a way of getting away from you if you're not careful. So just be sure to keep your stops tight. Don't go in there you know, thinking that whatever stock is a bargain wait for the stock to tell you that the buyers are back in control and right now in the short term time frame we have reasons to think there might be support in this area and we could even throw a Fibonacci on there and see if maybe we could justify a position but and it closed right there at that two-thirds retracement if you take this low to that high two-thirds of that comes in right here that's you know the, you don't want to fit it in reverse you want to look at it and say well there's a potential reason that some people might stop selling is a potential reason that others might start buying. We also have those potential reasons here in the 30 minute time frame. Let other people do the dirty work though. Let them rid the sellers of the market. Let's wait till it's safe to head back in. Um, you know, I'm 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 uh, I'm will perfectly willing to stand on the sidelines and let other people do the dirty work and then get in there with my capital uh, uh, fully intact and then take advantage of the momentum once it turns back higher again. But right now, there's no 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 suggestion that that's about to occur on the short-term time frame, and there's no evidence that this longer-term time frame is in any jeopardy either. So right now, I'm thinking that uh, it's probably a good time to take a day off or, or two. The, the Nasdaq, um, Nasdaq 100, the Qs lost about a percent as well. They were down 51 cents, and those those uh, this market also. Uh, came down and retested that $47 level from yesterday. This one doesn't look quite as bad, but we do have these shorter-term moving averages heading lower. That tells us we want to be cautious. I think maybe back above 47.40 for more than a half hour or so, that that would give us the uh, the confidence that maybe the buyers are back in control. But I think that uh, continues to be uh, the, the level of, of support uh, potential support of importance in the short term continues to be that 4680 level, so keep an eye on that tomorrow. Um, short term, we do have a downtrend. We do have this support broken. Looks like it's acting as resistance, so I think sidelines is best in there. Uh, the semiconductors are breaking down a little bit harder than I had hoped. We're back to that 50-day moving average again. We've got a 10 and 20-day moving average, which are declining, so we'll mix signal here on the daily time frame. But if this if the semiconductor market fails the 36 level and fails hard, there's a there's a chance that this whole move could be just one failed move, which would I think really shake the confidence of investors. I think we could see the beginning of a more severe sell off in those semis. So I'm hoping that they can hold on, let's say above 35 and a half just to be safe. 
But we're getting back down to that level that had been support in here. So I think you don't want to sell short unless, of course, you're a scalper intraday trading. Um, but we're at a potential area of support, mixed signals in here. And I think the, uh, the best course of action here as well is to just kind of sit and wait it out till we really have confirmation of who's got control of this market. The uh, IWM, that is the Russell 2000, uh, came down. It still remains above that key 83 level that had been, that's been so important over the last uh, month and a half, two months. So it came down a little bit harder today. And um, now we've got this short-term trend showing signs of weakness. And you can just take uh, a, a, a comparison of the Fibonacci and see that it hasn't pulled back as much as the S&P. Uh, so the S&P is you know, relatively weaker than the IWM. But we do still have short-term weakness. That does give us reason for concern, reason to be kind of on the sidelines. We get the same thing here with this trend line. And, you know, how do you draw the trend line? Does it matter if I go through these levels? I don't think it matters if you do or not. What we're trying to do is just capture the essence of the trend. It's not a trading system, a trend line is, I don't think. If you, if you look at a, a trend line as a trading system, I think you're looking at them uh, improperly. What we're just trying to do is identify what's, what's the real trend here, what's going on. And we do still have, like in the NASDAQ, this picture of these higher highs and higher lows. So realistically, this, uh, this market isn't in ser more serious trouble until it breaks down below 81.75. Below 81.75, I think, would be uh, reason for concern. But right now, we've still got this 83 level that, that ought to act as support and hopefully will, and this market can maybe continue higher. Um, we don't have any open positions. We were stopped out of Omni with a 45-cent gain, and this morning I didn't give any specific recommendations.